Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Mwaka. Here are some of the highlights. National Human Rights Commission seizes the gap created by COVID-19 by contributing to educational development in Emo State. Bono residents still look warm about COVID-19 protocols, demand palliatives from authorities. And the UK releases new coronavirus restrictions that could last for about four or six months. Nigeria's testing capacity is inching towards 500,000 as the country confirmed 195 cases in 24 hours. The new cases are reported from 10 states and the Federal Capital Territory. In the meantime, 105 persons were discharged in Plateau, Gombe, Kaduna, Oshun Rivers, Kano and Lagos states. Two deaths were recorded in Edo state. 7,663 infections are still active across the country, one of the lowest in the past three months. As at today, Kogi State has not recorded any new case in almost three months. Jigawa in 67 days. Zamfara reported a case lastly over a month ago. Kebi State in 24 days and Bornu State in 21 days. Kogi and Zamfara states have no case on admission, while Lagos is managing 3,532 active cases, the highest in the country. In Africa, South Africa is number nine in the world and leads on the continent, but recorded lower numbers from last night at 725 from yesterday's figures at 1,585 the day before yesterday. According to reports, the country's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is recuperating from a common cold after he postponed a meeting with the leadership of the National Education, Health and Allied Workers, who says a protest in Pretoria over the provision of PPE to frontline workers and also over salary increase. Around the world, uh, global coronavirus cases continue to rise with confirmed cases at over 31 million. The U.S. has crossed the 200,000 mark of COVID-19 deaths with cases rising rapidly in several states. The Plateau State Government has been explaining why the state has been recording more coronavirus cases, attributing it to more community testing. According to the governor, the efforts at flattening COVID-19 must be consistent, hence the engagement of all stakeholders to discuss strategies that will curtail community spread of the virus. He enumerated government's efforts at an interactive session held at the government house in Jos. I'm sure many of you are worried by the fact that Plateau State in recent times has become the epic center for COVID-19 cases in the country based on data released by NCDC. This is not surprising considering our testing capacity compared to many states who rarely feature on such chart because they are nowhere near us in terms of testing. Apart from the free testing that we carry out, we have also been consistent in treating those infected with the disease free of charge. The Commissioner of Health, who is the Chairman of the Subcommittee on Health, will give further details on the statistics of the pandemic and how we are responding. Suffice to say, the biggest challenge remains the lack of compliance to guidelines and protocols, denials and resistance to contact tracing and testing by some individuals. That is why we need the support and cooperation of critical stakeholders like you to overcome these challenges. The Chief Research Fellow at the Nigeria Institute of Medical Research, NIMA, has been speaking about the Institute's latest invention, the SARS-CoV-2 isothermomolecular assay called SIMA. I earlier spoke to him, Dr. Chika Mwama, who said the molecular uh, tests can give results in far less than 40 minutes and doesn't use up a lot of power. Term rapid, they often refer to antibodies and antigen tests. So we like to call it point of care. It's rapid, it gives result in less than 40 minutes. But when you use rapid, what comes to mind is antibody antigen.
So for the molecular test, we kind of call it point of care. So it's near to the doctors, it's near to the hospital where they can use it. So it's, it's rapid. The thing about the assay is that it's not the routine PCR. It's not cycling. So it does not take so much power. It runs at one temperature. That's the ISO thermal. thermal. One temperature at 40 degrees. And it gives you results. Actually, I'm taking it as long as 30 minutes because we want to try out the to get the lower ones. It just, in six minutes, it converts the RNA of the COVID-19 virus to DNA and starts amplifying. For some of them that we had the demonstration yesterday, um, on Friday, some of the very high samples, in as two, three minutes, you see them coming out. We are a testing lab for COVID. So we had access to samples and tried it and all that. So we are able to be, get it to test and get as low as 100 copies per mil. So if a sample has at least 100 copies per mil, we guarantee we detect it. Actually, it went as low as 16, but in going to 16, it jumped some that were between 100 and 16. So the one we knew we pick consistently is 100. So we stopped at 100. So we are guaranteeing up to 100. If someone had maybe 80 there, but we may not be able to get it. So we are doing things to see if we can improve the, um, that part. Over in Bornu State, the face of humanitarian intervention has changed as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Local NGOs are now engaged in grassroots distribution of palliatives and sensitization of the people on the preventive protocols. Reports show that people living below the poverty level are not bothered about the safety protocols but are means of livelihood. The Christian Aid and the European Union say they are working with local NGOs to reach out to the target population. They have been vulnerable because of uh, the insurgency in uh, Borno State. Uh, they were IDPs and they are still IDPs. Then coupled with the pandemic, it makes their case more precarious. And uh, coming in with this palliative of uh, 20,000 every month, I mean, it's really big money as far as they are concerned. So that one was able to take care of their needs and um, coupled with the sensitization, we, 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 we embarked upon in the communities. Why we're giving them this money is because people are under lockdown. Their sources of livelihoods were short. And these are people that barely eat one square meal a day. So this particular household that we identify them as vulnerable now is to provide them with cash that they can use to take care of their needs, not only food alone. There are many needs they can take care of. So that was the idea why we giving them that money is not to stop the COVID but is to reduce hunger and poverty. The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, is saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding the human rights of Nigerians during the lockdown earlier in the year occasioned by the pandemic. The agency played a role in recording and enforcing the rights of Nigerians. The Executive Secretary of the Commission visited Emo State to commission a school building project to assist qualitative education to children in rural areas. Our correspondent, Eita Kwekute, brings us this update. As part of efforts in contributing to the fight against COVID-19 pandemic and giving qualitative education to children in the rural areas during this pandemic, the National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, has built a COVID-19 compliant three-classroom block for pupils in the Central School, Ezi East, in Onicha community in Ezinite, Umbise, local government area of Imo State. According to the Executive Secretary of NHRC, Tony Ojuku, this gesture is in response to the impact of COVID-19 on the education system in the rural areas. He said the three classroom block is accompanied by six modern toilets, functional bowl, and a generating set to help the students when they resume school. What um, the National Human Rights Commission has done here is to set the standard for other Nigerians. Because under the COVID-19, it will be difficult for any schools to reopen without these basic amenities, like water, like good uh, toilets, like lights like a very well erected classroom which will take a minimum number of students so this is taking the COVID-19 response to another level to the community level so that we can encourage other Nigerians let them also go to their own communities and do things like this so that the children can be safe so that education will not be disrupted so that children will continue to have education 
whether in the city or in the rural area. With the distribution of free face masks, hand sanitizers, liquid soap by the commission and strict adherence to social distancing in their classes, pupils of the Central School Ezi East in Onicha community of Ezi Nita in the local government area of Imo State are set to resume school. From Owey, the Imo State capital, Eyi for COVID-19 updates. According to the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Nigeria is still very far from its 2 million test target, calling for strong caution as states try to reopen schools. It says 1 billion naira has been dispersed to uh, 32 states each to drive the COVID-19 responses, asking state governors to prioritize testing and surveillance activities. Joining us from Abuja studios is Mrs. Uh, Biola Ajeni Fuja, a clinical pharmacist. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having us again. From one who understands the fight to curb COVID-19, what area do you expect that the sum um, should be deployed to? Yeah, I think it should be targeted at anything that is going to break a chain in the transmission of COVID-19. So a large chunk of it should be, at, should be targeted at preventive measures, such as increasing advocacy, PPEs, and even as long as uh, we can go to like drug development so that we can break this chain in transmission. By breaking this chain in transmission, we reduce the number of people that come down with COVID-19. And as such, every other thing will fall into place and we won't have to be bothering ourselves with the burden of COVID-19. So one billion naira, is it a sufficient sum? Considering what some state governments have claimed they spend on treating a COVID-19 patient, take for example Lagos, saying they cost them between 500,000 to a million per day, depending on the severity of the cases, or perhaps um, Kaduna State that says it spends over 400,000 uh, naira to treat one COVID-19 patient. Yeah, it's a far cry from what is being spent. But you know, resources are limited, uh, are limited, and human wants are unlimited. So we have to make do with what we have. So this can be achieved by trying to break, as I said earlier, chain in transmission, so that the large chunk of money that is being going to treatment can be put to use to other things. So we should try and nip the, uh, the COVID-19 in the board by trying to reduce the number of cases we have. So they should make do with what is on ground now, because this is sort of like a palliative, just to reduce the burden on the governor. It's not as if to, uh, it's not something that is going to take care of what they have spent. It's just like a palliative to reduce the burden on them. Let's talk about the household seroprevalence surveys, which the uh, NCDC and NIMA are collaborating on. Um, are you optimistic that the results of the surveys will strengthen the COVID-19 response in the country? Yes, I am. Because uh, if we look at seroprevalence, it is a kind of survey that is used to study the occurrence of a disease. And how this is done is by estimating the number of antibodies on individual that had, had the disease. So by so doing, you'll be able to know the incidence of the disease, the age group that are mostly affected by the disease, and also be able to study the mode of transmission. So by knowing this, we'll be able to know how to tackle this issue of COVID-19 because we'll have a better understanding of what this is all about. We also understand that the rapid malaria tests uh, will also be carried out in the process to assess malaria infections and their possible relationship to the SARS-CoV-2 infection. But doesn't it point to a relationship that exists between hydroxychloroquine and COVID-19? Yeah, studies are still ongoing on the relationship between uh, hydroxychloroquine in regards to treatment of COVID-19. But hydroxychloroquine is a drug that has been in use for long, though not for COVID-19. It has been used in malaria and for rheumatoid arthritis. So it has different mechanism of action in tackling this disease. Like for the treatment of malaria, it acts by uh, altering the pH of the intracellular pH of the plasmodium. Plasmodium is a, is a kind of protozoa, which is a pathogen that causes malaria. So it has different mechanism of action in treating malaria. Also for the rheumatoid arthritis, it is, a, is an immune modulator. So for COVID-19, it has a different mechanism of ac action in tackling the coronavirus because like the COVID-19 is caused by a virus, not like uh, malaria, which is caused by protozoa. So 
I think with this zero prevalence study, we'll be able to understand it better and establish a relationship which we add more to the, to the stream of knowledge that is ongoing on the study of hydroxychloroquine and COVID-19. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Mrs. Biola Jennifuja, clinical pharmacist. Thank you. Thank you for having me once again. It's a pleasure. Around July, the Nigeria COVID-19 Research Consortium was conveyed by the NCDC and NIMA in collaboration with other institutions to bring indigenous experts and scientists to better uh, guide the Nigerian government's response to COVID-19 as it applies to our context. Well, joining us is Professor Shai Bubelo, Lead Candidate Therapeutics R&D Working Group, Nigeria COVID-19 Research Consortium, and he is also the Provost, College of Health Sciences, its man and Fodio University Sokoto. He joins us via Zoom. Thank you for joining us, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. What nice are the latest... All right, thank you so much. What are the latest research efforts by the NCRC to fighting COVID-19 in Nigeria? Yeah, the, usually when you have a pandemic like this, the first thing is knowledge generation. The thing about new viruses that... Not much is known about them, the way they cause the disease. And the more you know about this, the more you are going to be able to design a therapy for it. So there were two arms to, to the work. There are many subgroups doing different things, but each one running a race. But doing the science correctly is as important as running the race. So it, it will be slow, but there are a lot of efforts to make things faster while keeping the science. So the first thing is to learn about the virus. Do we have the same type in Nigeria like other places? Is there a difference? What are the mutation types? How does it affect our system differently? And we, we are getting a lot of knowledge about it. We recently sent out a paper where we are able to get some explanation for why the thing appears to affect us, not as bad as the other, as the other countries, uh, but there's still a danger in the horizon, so we should not be complacent. And oh. we also develop a, a lot of efforts to repurpose drugs. The problem is that to develop new molecules takes many years, but pandemic is not going, to, not going to give you that. Luckily, there are thousands of drugs in the, in the market already that are already approved, and legally you can use them off-label, we call them, and if it is effective, so the effort is to repurpose a lot of them. So we are in the lab screening a lot of them. We got some candidates and with good effort and, and support from Ted Fund, we are in the lab now screening them and trying to uh, predict how they will do, how much they will do in the clinic. There's a lot of difference between working in the lab and when you get to human. So those steps needs to, uh, we need to go through them carefully and, and uh, get the result that can be verified everywhere. So essentially, it's a lot of work that's ongoing. But tell us about the research with regards to why the virus appears to be um, perhaps not as bad as it is um, across the world. Yeah, there's, there are a lot of reasons that you could adduce, but what we are finding out so far it appears that we are lucky that this particular virus, our body appears to be able to uh, defend against, against it very well, the innate defense. These are still preliminary data and they need to be verified, but our finding is suggesting that our intracellular defense system appears to be highly effective and therefore uh, it keeps it in check, but it also makes it very dangerous because asymptomatic patients tend to have the type of virus that be very dangerous to, to those that are vulnerable. So you could be healthy, but take the virus to your vulnerable people. You have a hypertension at home, you have a diabetic at home, you have an elderly at home, we are still not out of the woods. So we need to be very careful, even though majority of our, our system appears to be dealing well with the virus and keeping it in check, but this does not take away the fact that the vulnerable still remain vulnerable in Nigeria. Diabetes, hypertensive, and the elderly will still die at a, at a very fast rate. So you need to still maintain the, 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 the effort we have done so far 
and which has, to, has appears to be very effective. So I think we are not doing too badly and uh, nature is helping us uh, and uh, we pray a lot and God is helping us. All right. I guess that also uh, you relate that to Nigeria and the uh, and Africa. Yes. All right. We'd like to thank you so much, Professor Shaiba Bello, lead uh, candidate, Therapeutics R&D Working Group, uh, Nigeria COVID-19 Research Consortium. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has advised people to work from home where possible and bars and restaurants to close early to tackle the fast-spreading coronavirus, saying the restrictions could last as long as six months. His advice comes after government scientists cautioned that debts may soar without urgent action. The Prime Minister stopped short of announcing another full lockdown, as he did in March, but said further action could be taken if the disease was not suppressed. Meanwhile, the number of coronavirus deaths in the United States has passed 200,000. Here's more on the global update. Max says naval firefighters have been testing school toys and furniture for traces of coronavirus to make sure cleaning has been done properly after cases of the virus were detected. It's a procedure the Operation Comet project says is the first of its kind in France and one that they have been carrying out up to 18 times a day. Once a school reports a case of COVID-19, cleaners go in, followed by the firefighters, who take swabs rubbed onto school materials and surfaces, which they run in a machine that gives results in about 45 minutes. Health officials in Israel fear that the three-week lockdown imposed on Friday, September the 18th may not be long or restrictive enough to slow the daily case toll and relieve hospitals. New cases have reached daily highs of more than 5,000 among Israel's 9 million population and the doctors are warning that health facilities will soon reach capacity. The country is sharply rebounding from single-digit lows following a relatively stricter initial lockdown from March to May. South Korea has suspended its free influenza vaccination programs aimed at reducing the burden on its healthcare system strained by persistent outbreaks after reports that storage problems occurred during distribution of the flu shots. The country, which is facing a resurgence of COVID-19 cases since August, planned to procure 20% more flu vaccines for this winter season than the previous year to immunize 30 million people and start free inoculation on Tuesday for some 19 million eligible people. Finally, in China's Santa workshop, sellers are fretting over saving Christmas. Vendors and manufacturers in Yiwu are at pains to try and save Christmas this year as the novel coronavirus pandemic opens international business travel, forcing countries, including China, to place stringent curbs on entry into the country by foreigners. With no improvement on the situation, sellers in Yiwu who are used to doing face-to-face -face bulk deals with their customers have to rely on video conferencing and that has hampered business further. For more updates, take a look at our website. It's channelstv.com. you find out more updates on the pandemic. Several other stories there as well in politics, business from Africa, the rest of the world. That's the program this evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Minister Antoine Stay safe.